There are many questions confronting the scientific community of today, many concerning the planet which intelligent life inhabits. One of those questions, though, is whether that planet is alone harboring life. This single question is so divisive in the scientific community that great minds on both sides are absolutely sure that the, that the advocates on the other side are completely wrong. Current estimates are the universe is 13.8 billion years old and life originated on Earth about 4 billion years ago. Given the enormous number of stars and planets, it is likely that we are not the only life in the universe or indeed in our galaxy. It is statistically highly unlikely that we are the first planet to have developed life. That was Mark Neal of Palgrave Malcomillion Journals. Here, he is supporting the idea that not only are there other beings out there, but that they are in fact intelligent. This idea is in itself just another divisive topic for astronomers trying to find life among the stars. As yet another amateur astronomer argues. We know these extraterrestrials can't be too far beyond us technically, because if they were, we would have already known about them. I mean, if you could just look up in the sky and just see the blinking light. His name is Jim Edwards, and in a recent interview with our reporter, Jack Hitt, Edwards talks about how if there were aliens on our level of technology, or in other words, able to at least use radio or other waves or ways to communicate, that we should have heard them by now. Can we come up with something that would be able to transmit it to another star in an intelligible way? And the answer is yes. Would it transmit anything across the galaxy cost a fortune? Certainly it would take the resources of either a small nation or a corporation or a university because it would be expensive to make a signaling device. It's beyond the means of one person, unless you're Bill Gates or someone like that. But it's certainly within the realm of a corporation or a university or a nation or a city. If we can do it, then the other guys can do it too. And for Jim Edwards, the other guys, who are the extraterrestrials, also known as that alien life elsewhere in the universe, or more often referred to as ETs, or sometimes any number of many other names, again, according to Jim Edwards, they are not there. The numbers say that statistically, according to both Neil and Edwards respectively, that there should be other life in the universe. Edwards, however, is arguing that life would not be intelligent. Again, he states that we should have heard from them by now. Hopping the fence to the other side of the argument, there are several strong arguments with that there is no other life in the universe at all. Some astronomers go even further and state that our own existence is statistically surprising, even for those that do not believe that to be the case they still paint a pretty grim picture. Scientists have found fossil remains of single-celled organisms in rocks 3.4 billion years old, just about a billion years younger than the Earth itself. At first, it sounds like good news for anyone hoping to find extraterrestrials. Surely, if life got started on Earth so soon, it could arise with equal ease on other planets. The snag is that although it started, it did not do much for the next 3 billion years. Indeed, microbes that are essentially identical to those original bacterial cells still live on Earth today. Arguably, the most successful species in history of, our, of life on our planet, and a classic example of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well put by John Gribben, a professor whose findings on the possibility of extraterrestrial life has recently been published in Scientific American under the title why we are probably the only intelligent life in the galaxy, alone in the Milky Way. Quite the inferring title. Notably, the part specifying intelligent life. Here, Gribben is making the argument that the jump from simple prokaryotes to eukaryotes, a major step in order for life to become multicellular, like humans, Gribben is arguing that that jump is exceedingly rare. So rare, in fact, that even if there is other life, at least in our galaxy, once again specified by Gribben, that it would likely be nothing more than simple bacteria like that back on Earth. One Stefan Webb, however, tells an even worse story for those still hoping, waiting, and praying for E.T. to phone home. Habitability. Right sort of planet around the right sort of star. The trillion becomes a billion. Stability. A climate that stays benign for eons. The billion becomes a million. Life must start. 
the million becomes a thousand. Complex life forms must arise. A thousand becomes one. Sophisticated tool use must develop. That's one planet in a thousand galaxies. To understand the universe, they'll have to develop the techniques of science and mathematics. That's one planet in a million galaxies. To reach the stars, they'll have to be social creatures, capable of discussing abstract concepts with each other using complex grammar. One planet in a billion galaxies. And they have to avoid disaster, not just self-inflicted, but from the skies, too. That planet around Proxima Centauri, last year, it got blasted by a flare. One planet in a trillion galaxies. Just us in the visible universe. Ultimately, whether or not there is other life in the universe, at least on Earth, the chatter is loud and clear, and the seemingly never-ending argument between the astronomers and astrobiologists. The only solid signal they are sending is that we are not alone. And even if we are, all that means is that it is that much more important for us to go out amongst the stars and explore. This has been Mark Tachinsky on Moab 38M Radio, signing off.